Alleluia, friends. Christ is risen. Jesus is risen. For today is Easter morning, our great day of celebration. But today is a day long in the making. The story starts oh so long ago when God created the heavens and the earth and he created a garden called Eden whose name literally means paradise. And then God created a man and a woman, Adam and Eve, to live in that garden and to be his friends. God provided everything they would need to be happy in the garden. But Adam and Eve couldn't keep their friendship with God. And so they walked away from God and from that friendship because the devil, who is a liar, started whispering lies into their ears. Does God really love you? Is he really your friend? If he was really your friend, wouldn't he want you to be happy? For you to be an adult and to make your own decisions and do everything you wanted to do and to be in charge. If God really loved you, wouldn't he let you do anything you wanted in the garden? Come with me. You can be like God. And so Adam and Eve fell for the devil's lies. They thought they could, in fact, become like God. But it was just a lie. They weren't going to ever become like God like that. And so they began to walk with the devil. And they ate the fruit from that tree. And they lost their friendship with God. And in losing that friendship, everything was changed. They had to leave the garden. They had to make their own way and come to find out it's a lot harder than it looks. The devil had lied and he had tricked them. And that day, sin and suffering and shame and pain and death itself entered the world. But God didn't forget about his friends because he loved them too much to forget about them. And Adam and Eve lived some more, and then they died. But this isn't the end of the story, even for Adam and Eve. So God sent prophets and judges and kings to his friends to try to call them back. But they wouldn't listen. They kept thinking they could do it on their own. Now, I'm reminded of a story when I was first graduating from college, and I was so excited. I was excited because I was going to get to go out and be on my own. I was going to have my own job and my own money, my own place, and my own rules. I could do what I want. I was going to be like a real adult. And so I sat down and did a spreadsheet, because who doesn't love to sit down and do spreadsheets? And as I'm doing my spreadsheet, I look and I figure out that if I work at my job and make the money they say I'm going to make, and I live with my roommate and his mom from college, and if I just don't buy any food, I'll probably have just enough money to make it. I don't know if any of you, when you graduated from college or first went out on your own, had that kind of experience. Experience. And then I was driving my car and I realized that engine coolant can leak through a crack in your engine into your oil. And that's a real emergency. And did you know it's an expensive emergency too? Adulting is not all it's cracked up to be. Sometimes it's just expensive and hard. Now, my parents helped me get a new car. My roommate's mom secretly fed me. And my future in-laws took excellent care of me. And I ate there almost every night. And they would secretly slip you money from time to time, too. Just to make sure things were going to be okay. 
Because adulting is hard and you need a friend to help you do it sometimes. Well, things kept going on for God's friends and people. And we kept trying to be like God on our own. But the truth is, is we can't do it. We just can't do it. We were never going to be like God. And so, God decided that he would come and be like us. God sent his son, Jesus, born of a virgin, to become a man. To live and to die like you and like me. And Jesus came and we are told that he came ministering to the people to whom the devil was lying. And Jesus came to speak truth and love into those lies and to speak a hand up into the difficulty that we have. So the devil kept on lying, but Jesus kept on doing his work. And then, one day, he takes all of the suffering and shame and pain and fear onto himself and offers it on the hardwood of the cross we might each come within the saving reach of his embrace, that we might each become his friends, that we might become like him. And Jesus dies on that cross and the devil was laughing because he thinks he's won. But the devil had been lying so long he'd even started lying to himself. And three days later on that first Easter morning, Jesus rises again. And oh, friends, what a celebration in heaven and on earth there was. And what fear there was in hell. Because the jig was up, all of the lies, all the suffering and shame and pain and doubt and death was to be ended. Jesus had won the great and final victory, and he had won his friends back a way for them to become like him indeed, to live and dwell with him as his friends forever. That great hope, the death of lies and the death of death itself, is what we celebrate today. Now, I'll be the first to tell you that life is hard and sometimes your engine cracks and coolant leaks into your oil and it's expensive and you don't know how you're going to make it. But that's what the church is for. We are Jesus' body and blood here on the earth, reaching out with his hands to help, to lift you up to friendship with him. So today, today Jesus reaches out his hands and begs you to come. Just, just come back, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been. No matter if you're a great person or a terrible person, no matter how ashamed you are of what you've done, Jesus says, come. Come today and be my friend. If you need help taking the first steps to that friendship, leave us a message in the comments down below. Send us a direct message and we will contact you. Because we want to follow up. We want to be Jesus' hands in this world. We want to help you know the joy of friendship with him.